The focus of this video is using vocabulary reading strategies to become a more effective reader. Good readers are all going to practice. Good reading doesn't happen by accident. It takes practice just like any other hobby or sport. Certainly the more you read the better you'll get, just like the more you practice any activity the better you'll get. However, it's important to practice using the correct strategies in reading or in any other sport. For example, if you practice running every day, but the way you practice is like this, then you're probably not going to get to be a very effective or successful runner. Similarly, if you spend a lot of time reading, but you don't know most of the words on the page and just skip them, you won't be an effective reader. Good readers, therefore, are like good athletes. They practice a lot using good strategies and techniques that eventually become automatic, meaning they don't even have to think about them because they start using them without thought. Vocabulary strategies come in terms of context clues and word roots. Context clues means that you get help from the words, phrases, sentences, or illustrations surrounding the unknown word, and you use those to help you determine what is the meaning. We can use context clues with words we know and with new words. In order to use them with new words, we can look at the sentences around it. For example, authors will often provide clues by giving the meaning of the word in the same or surrounding sentence. Consider this example from the River Queen. Her dress was embroidered with marguerites, her signature daisy. By using the phrase her signature daisy immediately after marguerites, it redefines what a marguerite is, letting us know that it is a type of daisy. You can also see this in vocabulary songs, like here, but my friends are excited, they're never blasé. So by looking at the sentence, or the part of the sentence before blasé, we can see they are excited. We also can use the keyword never, so we can see that excited would be the opposite of blasé. So blasé would probably be something along the lines of boring or uninteresting. Another example from the book Sudden Impact can be seen with the word defiantly. She tried to grab onto me, but I shook her off. I'm saying, I, said, I said defiantly, maybe I was wrong to be so stubborn. So here we can see by looking at keywords like shook her off and stubborn that defiantly is going to mean acting against someone, perhaps even when you shouldn't be. Sometimes we might not be able to get the exact definition when we're reading a new word, but based on what the topic is about, you can come up with some connection to the meaning of the word. For example, in the book Power Slide, which is a skateboarding book, you'll see this sentence. He skated slowly, did a quick blunt to fakie on the coping, rolled across the flat and, up, and back up the other side. You might not be able to figure out exactly what each of these words means, but you should be able to figure out that blunt and fakie are types of skateboarding tricks, and coping would be some sort of area where they skateboard. So while you might not have the clearest picture in your head, I think most of us can picture someone skateboarding doing tricks in a certain area. So we can come up with an approximate meaning even if we don't know exactly what these are. Context clues aren't just used with new words, though. They're also used with words that we already know. This is important because so many of the words that we have in the English language have multiple meanings and, in some cases, even multiple pronunciations. This can make it difficult because if you see the word and you register it with one meaning, but really the author intends a different meaning, it can easily cause confusion. So that's why it's important to use context to figure out which meaning does the author intend. So did you know that there are more than 80 different definitions just of the word run? By having that many definitions, it can make it extremely difficult to figure out what the author means. Consider these sentences. I am running in a marathon. My neighbor is running for city council. My refrigerator is running in the kitchen. In each of these words, we see a different meaning of running. Running in a marathon brings up 
the more traditional definition of running that I think most people picture. And that is someone physically running, like in the picture. But to run for city council means that you're trying to be elected. And if your refrigerator is running, that simply means that your refrigerator is working. It's important for us to use context clues so that we can tell which definition of running we're using. You can also see this in paragraphs where we might use a similar word multiple times with multiple meanings. For example, look at the following paragraph that uses bear and bear. Hiking in the forest, John and Mary grew afraid of the bears. They could not bear the cold and blowing snow, so they looked for shelter to protect their bare hands and faces. Finding a bare room, Mary asked John to bear with her as she built a fire. They shared a bear hug to stay warm while they waited for the fire to heat the room. The first use of bear refers to the animal, which I think most people have that as the first thing that comes to mind when they think bear. But yet, just later on in the same line, we see bear as in they could not tolerate or deal with the cold and blowing snow. We have bear, B-A-R-E, meaning unprotected or uncovered hands. We have a bear room, meaning empty. To bear with her means to be patient or to wait for her as she builds the fire. And then a bear hug simply means a big hug. So within this one paragraph, we have several different meanings of these two words. There's also times where you might need to go back and reread what you were reading because the pronunciation is different and the meaning then becomes different. This is common with words like READ, which can be pronounced as both read and read. So for example, I typically start by saying the word read. But as I read the sentence, I read the book yesterday, I quickly realize wrong word, because yesterday to tells me that this happened in the past. So I need to change the way I read the sentence so that I instead say I read the book yesterday. You can also use context clues in the next sentence. Will you read me a story? Will indicates that it's going to happen in the future, so that tells us we would use read instead of read. Word, word roots are another way that we can help figure out the meaning of an unknown word. Using ro word roots to determine the meaning of a word involves looking at the prefixes, the part that comes at the beginning of the word, the suffixes, which comes at the end, or the base word, which is the main word, typically in the middle. These word parts can give clues about the meaning. For example, in words like reapply, you can break it into two parts, re, the prefix, and apply, the base word. If you know that re means back or again, you can determine that reapply means to apply something again. Similarly, if you look at the word revive, which can also be broken into two parts, re, the prefix, and vive, the base word, you know, you can figure out what that word means. If you know re means back or again, and vive or viv means life, you can figure out that revive means to bring back to life, like with the use of CPR. You can also use root or base words to find familiar words within new words. Look at the following sentence. I prefer to read stories that are fictitious rather than true. You might look at the word fictitious and be confused as to what that means. But if you look within it for a similar related word, that can help you figure out what it means. For example, fictitious is related to the word fiction. So if you see that fict fictitious looks like fiction, then you can figure out that it means not true. You can also use context clues here to help you figure this out because it says rather than true. So that tells you it's going to not be true and therefore you can figure out that it would be the opposite of fact, which would be fiction. With these strategies, you're going to start a new assignment, a reading journal. In this journal, you're going to keep track of when you use these strategies. You have two weeks to identify at least five times you use context clues or root words to help you figure out the meaning of a word. Your format, you're going to write the word, the sentence where you found it, what it means, the strategy used, so either context clues or root words, or in some cases you might be able to use both, as well as how it was used, so explain the steps that you took. 
And then where did you find this? Did you find it in a book? Did you find it in a magazine? In something that you were reading online? So tell us where you found it. Here's an example. In the word defiantly, the sentence, she tried to grab onto me, but I shook her off. I'm staying, I said defiantly. Maybe I was wrong to be so stubborn. The meaning, to go against what you're supposed to do. Strategy, context clues. Shook her off and stubborn tells me that she does what she wants and isn't doing what someone wants her to do. So I explain here, how, could, how did I apply the context clues? And then where did I find it? In the book Sudden Impact.